Okay, so here's the short version of variation of parameters. Skip to this. Write this down. Got it. Get this tattooed on you if you intend to do variation of parameters often. Probably right here would be a good spot because you want some you want some real estate for that one, right? Because you don't want to have to Can like. Is that a prime? <laughs> right. Okay, so I have my original equation that's something like p zero y double prime plus p one y prime plus p two y is some forcing function f of x. I have my guess that I made. Right. Y was mu one y one plus mu two y two. Then I have my kind of make this into a reasonable sized project assumption, which is mu1 y1 plus mu2 y, uh, sorry, mu1 prime y1 plus mu2 prime y2 is zero. And then I have the thing I got out of manipulating all of that crud, which was y1 prime mu1 prime plus y2 prime mu2 prime is the forcing term over the coefficient on y double prime. Cool? Put this on a note card or in your brain otherwise. So let's use this to solve one. So solve y double prime minus 3 over x y prime plus 4 over x squared y equals the natural log of x. And obviously, we're going to have to assume that x is not greater than or equal to 0, but strictly greater than 0. Right? OK. Uh, and given some solutions. So given y1 is x squared and y2 is x squared log x. Cool. All right. Thoughts? <laughs> yeah. Don't think very hard. Go look at this thing. Right? So the things that I would recommend you start with are these two guys. There's also a much fl more fleshed out solution in the book. Like, you can massage these together to make some stuff happen. I wouldn't remember that. It's usually easiest to start from here and do that last bit on your own rather than memorizing that chunk of thing to shove in here. So in this case, our p0 of x is just 1. OK. So <laughs> the very least, I can eliminate the p0 of x. So I have my two equations, and I know that this has an over 1 on it. What other pieces do you know? Uh, y1, y2. Okay, y1 and y2. Do you know mu1 and mu2? No. No. So you need mu1 prime, and then what's y1? Uh, x squared. X squared plus mu2 prime, and x y2 squared. is x squared times the natural log of x, and this is supposed to equal zero. Zero. Good, like in the cookbook feel here. F of x is natural log of x. F of x is natural log of x. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Differentiate some stuff. Differentiate some stuff. So y1 prime is 2x. So I got a mu1 prime times 2x plus, and then I got a mu2 prime. 2x natural log of x plus. <laughs> 2x log x plus uh, x, x squared x something. X squared over x, x, squared over x yeah. is x, I think. Yeah. I need the product rule on y2. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're looking at? I'm just trying to see what you wrote. I wrote 2x so log, log x plus x. <laughs> okay. And I tried to cram it in as small a space as I could in order to make it as confusing as possible. Okay, so now, you need to solve for one or the other mu1 or mu2, right? Prime. 
Okay, so. Can we divide the top equation by just x? Or no? Sure, divide the top equation by x squared. That seems like a great idea. Why do I know I can divide by x squared? Because x is bigger than zero. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> so if I divide this whole equation by x squared, I get mu1 prime plus mu2 prime log x is zero. So mu1 prime is negative. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> so that would be mu1 prime is negative mu2 prime log x. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take that, shove it in here. This is why you don't bother to remember the big formula, because usually it's easier to solve this by looking at it than it is by doing the like crank that they made in the book. So take that thing, shove it in here, get minus 2x log x times mu2 prime, prime. prime plus mu2 prime times 2x log x plus mu2 prime x is log x. And then you could notice... Factor out mu2. Uh, mu2 oh, sure, you could factor out mu2 prime. Oh, there's a... Also, there's cancellation. There's, yeah, plus or minus. Right. That thing and oh, that, that thing are opposites, right? <laughs> yeah. Like there's a minus 2x log x mu2 prime. 2x log x mu2 prime. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that all part zeroes out. And you are left with mu2 prime, mu2 prime is log of x over x. Plug that back in up there. Okay. And then if you plug yeah. that back in up here, you get mu1 prime is minus log of x over x times log of x. Cool! Right? Uh, double integral, maybe? I don't know. Oh, for crap's sake. Yeah, you're right. I don't know the mu is, I just know mu primes, right? Oh, but that's not so bad. I can find mu's from mu primes. I just have to integrate. Right, so you need to slap a de-eater on this thing. Yet mu1 is minus the integral of log of x quantity squared over x dx. And on this one you get mu2 is the integral of log of x over x. You can use some natural log of x for both. Okay, both of them are u sub. That's a nice one, actually. <laughs> so let u be log x here, then du is 1 over x dx. Oh, whoops. <gasps> Get away with that dx. <gasps> okay, so there's your du. So this guy becomes the integral of u du. I'm doing this color thing up here to highlight something I'm going to talk about later. Uh, so that would be u squared over 2 plus, e. plus a constant. And your u was natural log of x. So out of the blue and into the black, I get, I get mu1. No, that's mu2. mu2 is log of x squared over 2 plus constant. And a similar substitution into blue land on this top thing will get you that mu1 is log of x cubed over 3. Log of x cubed over 3 plus, plus constant. Oh, Get the minus sign. Yeah. yeah, really, I'm finding a particular solution anyways, right? Oh, with the, yeah, with the minus. Because I know the homogeneous solution, right? It's going to be C1Y1 plus C2Y2. So, we don't need so my constants are already kind of taken care of. Alternatively, you could call this one C1 and that one C2, and you'd get the general solution out of your guess. Is that one not negative? And this one should be negative, which was the thing I was waiting for someone to find. So then you trot that all the way back over here to the beginning and cram that into what your original guess was. So,
So from the superposition principle, I get that my most general guess, is, or my most general solution now, is C1 x squared plus C2 x squared log x plus Y1. Yeah, mu1 times y1, right? Yeah. Okay, so I need a minus log of x cubed over 3 times x squared plus mu2, so that would be log of x squared over 2 times x squared log x. And do those, those do a thing where they mash together and make a smaller thing, right? So. But not zero. Notation wise, you have like a y over there and a y here. But they're definitely like not the same. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Over here, I was expecting to find the general solution, so I was expecting to have the constants of integration on those. Okay. Tony points out rightly that I probably don't need those, com those because I know that I could just add to the homogeneous solution. So this is like a particular solution over here when you don't include the constants. And if you do include the constants, right, then this is the general solution. If you're finding the particular, you just yeah. Scrap those two. Then first this right. piece is the particular part, right? And then this is C1, Y1, and C2, Y2. Uh, yeah. Right? Because the general is the homogeneous yeah, part yeah, okay. plus the particular. Cool. So if you include the constants of integration, you don't have to sweat the homogeneous part. And if you set them equal to zero, then you need that in there. Oh, because that's just C1 times Y1. Oh, okay. Is that my particular just 1 sixth? Or am I doing that? Uh, yeah, that's one sixth x squared log cubed. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. 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 Some reason I was so yeah, you can combine that a little bit, but my I natural logs of x's were like opposite powers in my head. I was like, man, that cancels like so good. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cancel out as much as you would think it does. Yeah. You get so you drop all of this, you get a sixth of that. Algebra. Wait, arithmetic. That's arithmetic. There's an S. There's an S. <laughs> okay, fair point. Do you have time to cap with 31? Maybe. Okay, good with this? Question? No? Cool.